Blessings, family, blessings, and good afternoon. Hallelujah. Blessings, Dad. Blessings, sir. Hallelujah. Blessings. Alicia Thompson, I see you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Blessings, family. As you chime in, just remember to hit that share button. And be intentional about being a blessing to somebody else on this afternoon. Amen. Patricia Brown. God bless you, Miss Brown. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Auntie Ruti, God bless you. Lady Vivian, God bless you. Oh, my beautiful wife is on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, CD, I love you. Minister Johnson, God bless you. Pastor Roberts, I see you. Thank you for joining us. Minister Katrina, hallelujah, I pray your speedy recovery. Amen, that the Lord continues to strengthen you to do His work in the kingdom. Amen. It's Barnett, God bless you. Mommy Jackson, God bless you. Samantha, God bless you. Miss you, miss you, miss you, miss you. And the family, amen. Uncle J, my love, amen. Hallelujah, Becky Williams, God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you soon, amen. Nikia Bruton, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to give the others just a few more minutes to chime in. Amen. Remember to hit that share button as you come on in this afternoon. Hallelujah. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. We made it to one more weekend. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is it about him? Is it about him? Is it about him this afternoon? Amen. Even as we just wait for a few more people to chime in if you will just begin to just open up your mouth right where you are and just begin to give God some praise just begin to give him some worship come on he's worthy hallelujah how many of you want him to be the center hallelujah of all that you do of everything that you are everything that you aspire to do how many of you know that he desires to be the center of it all Hallelujah. Father, we place you at the very center of everything that we will do today. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Amen. Father, be the center of our church. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, Jesus, so that every knee will bow. Never come may confess that you are Jesus. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. You are the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. You are Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. 
Hallelujah, even now in this moment, we adore you, we shabbat you, we lift you up in this hour, for you are Jesus, hallelujah, the one who is worthy of every praise, we give you glory from our hearts to the heavens, now may you be the center of it all, be the center, be the center, be the center, amen, we're getting ready to go into it. Hallelujah, let me get this down, amen, again blessings and good afternoon to you, Sir Booker, I see you sir, Minister Bruce, I see you, God bless you all, hallelujah, I want to thank you again for joining us for another Midday Motivation, amen, on behalf of our Senior Pastor Dr. Lincoln G. Coffey and Assistant Pastor April Antoinette Coffey, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness in joining us every day from Tuesday to Friday right here at this time for Midday Motivation. I am excited as usual because last week the devil tried something, but how many of you know that there is victory in Jesus? Amen. And so I'm here, I'm here today, and I thank you all for your prayers, amen. I trust that you guys have been, hallelujah, praying because I felt it, amen, and the recovery was fast, amen. So thank you guys for your prayer, thank you for your messages, thank you for your phone calls, amen. I love you guys, amen. We're going to go right into it, but if you will with me. Just come into agreement as we open up in prayer. Father, we just bless you right now. And we thank you, Father, for all that you have done, for everything that you are doing, and for the things that you are getting ready to do. Father, here we are another time, hallelujah, hoping to hear from you. We pray that you will speak and cause our ears to hear what you have to say to the church in the name of Jesus. Father, even now, speak through my mouth. Think through my mind and let your glory hallelujah be made manifested through all that will be said and done in Jesus name amen amen and amen remember if you have not yet hit share come on and be intentional about sharing this afternoon amen hallelujah now we have begun a new series amen and if you have been following us, hallelujah, you have heard the associate pastors. As a matter of fact, I want to give a big shout out to the associate pastors right here at Open Fire. I believe they have been doing a phenomenal job. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Blunt, Pastor Damietta, Pastor Greg. Amen. I also want to give a big shout out to our OFF pastors over there in Bartlett. God bless you. They have been doing a great work over there, hallelujah, in Bartlett, Texas. We love our O5 family, amen, hallelujah, and we thank God for the leadership, hallelujah, in this ministry. God has given us a visionary, and we thank God for none other than our senior pastor, Dr. Lincoln G. Coffey. He is a man indeed after God's own heart, amen, and we bless God for you, Dad, we love you. And we pray that you will continue to do that which God has placed on your heart to do. Hallelujah. As we co-labor together. Pastor Blunt, I love you, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to jump right in. We already know the time is usually very short. It flies by so fast. And I want to be respectful of your time. Hallelujah. Like I said earlier, if you guys have been following us, you would have heard, amen, the new series that we began, amen, two weeks ago. Culture and the church. Amen. Culture and the church. Our senior pastor came with a phenomenal word. Hallelujah. Culture and the church. And since then, the associate pastors have been running with this thing. And it has been indeed amazing what God has been doing through His people. 
as he continues to speak. And so I want to stay right there in the vein on this afternoon. And I want to talk to us for a few minutes on the kingdom culture. The kingdom culture. Amen. And I want to ask you guys a question on this afternoon. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Because I promise you, if you are looking for something, hallelujah, that God has divine and orchestrated to be in the church, you'll find it in the culture. Amen. Hallelujah. It's in the culture. It's all there. Amen. Many of us have been around long enough to um, have seen people go and people come. Amen. Many of us have also been around long enough to watch people stay. And so if you serve in any capacity of leadership, then you already know that the reason why all of this happened is because of culture. Amen. We'll see people come, we'll see people go, we'll see people stay, but at the end of the day, we'll realize that something, the fundamental truth, is that culture is really what shapes or dictate some of these actions. Amen. And so the Bible tells us, hallelujah, that without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision, the people perish. But it's imperative that we understand, believers, that whilst the people perishes as a result of a lack of vision, right? Culture trumps vision. Culture trumps vision. This is why the Bible tells us that we are to write the vision and make it plain. Why? So that those that sees the vision, those that receives the vision, they're able to run with it. In other words, so that they're able to work at it, that they're able to effect or put into effect this vision. Why? Because outside of culture, that a vision is reduced to just a great idea. Hallelujah. Our senior pastor said it two weeks ago. We've been hearing it. Vision, as great as it might be, is always going to be reduced to just a great idea without the right culture. Amen. And so Jesus Christ understood this, the importance of culture. And so what he did was, in the interest of time, when he came, he made it his business to correct some culture. Because it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what vision he has for our lives, without the right culture being in place, then the thing will never come to its full manifestation. Amen. And so we saw we are right throughout scripture. Jesus would go about changing cultures and addressing cultures. We saw it when he went into the house, uh, the temple. The Bible says that Jesus was upset. We saw it. He flipped the tables over. Why? Because the culture was supposed to be that the house of God was supposed to be a house of prayer. But then they would have made it into something else because they were doing their own thing. What? then is culture culture is what we do culture is how we do what we do and culture is why we do it in other words culture is the way we do things amen culture is the way we do things now it's important that we understand that culture exists in every facet of life in every aspect of life, we will find culture. Amen. At school, there is a certain time that you're expected to be in class. Why? Because that's the culture. And, 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 and if you don't get there by that time, then you're going to be marked absent. Why? Because that's just the way that they do it there. Amen. Or, or senior pastor is a medical doctor. Amen. And... If it is that he's expected to wear his scrubs to work, then it doesn't matter how well we think he rocks his African suits. Amen. We know that loves his African suits. But it doesn't matter how well he looks in his African suit. He cannot wear that to his job. Why? Because that's not the way they do things there. He has to wear his uniform. Why? Because that's the culture and that's just the way they do it. Their culture is is everywhere 
heaven has a culture. Heaven has a culture. We know this. Why? Because we saw where Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. Why? Because he was trying to do things his own way. Amen. And so we understand that everywhere there is culture. In Psalms 1 verse 6, the Bible tells us that the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 14 and verse 12 that there is a way that seems right to a man. In fact, one translation says it this way, there is a way that seemeth right, which therefore takes the word seem and puts it into its continuous tense saying therefore then that there is a way that seemed right there's a way that seems right and there is a way that will forever seem right to a man why hallelujah but watch this it tells us at the end of that verse that the end thereof is what is the ways of death the ways of death now, when we look at the word way, it's the Greek word hados, which is translated to mean a course of conduct, among other things, of course. But I want us to look at this. It, it, it means a course of conduct. A course of conduct in 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 John 14 verses 1 to 6 or senior pastor um, alluded to this verse hallelujah uh, we saw where Jesus was talking to his disciples and he was telling them listen I'm going to prepare a place for you and if it is that I go I'm going to return so that I can receive you unto myself that where I am, there you might be also. And then he said to them, watch this, you know where I'm going, and you know the way, right? However, we saw where Thomas responded and said, listen, Jesus, we, we don't even know what you're talking about. We don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus responded in verse 6. He said, I am the way the truth and the life no man goeth to the father but by me he said watch this when you examine the word way again it speaks to a course of conduct in other words jesus was trying to tell them that where i am going to prepare a place for you the way to get there is to look at my course of conduct Look at the way I conduct myself because this way is going to be the culture that will cause you to get to that place. In other words, there is no way for you to get there apart from adhering to this culture that I have created. This example that I have set. Amen. And so watch this. We see this and... We, 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 we fail to understand sometimes that the culture of the church is created around the life of Christ. Hallelujah. Things to note about culture as it relates to the kingdom. We are instructed to love one another, not tolerate but love one another according to first john we we're, we're instructed to love one another and watch this again because culture as it relates to the kingdom is centered around jesus christ then we know that when we look at love in and of itself the bible tells us that god is love the bible tells us that god is love watch this and then it goes to tell us in 1 Corinthians 13 what love is and what love is not. And so it will tell us that love is patient. Is God patient? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Is God kind? Yes, he is, of course. And when we look at all the other characteristics of love, we see Christ. Amen. We see Christ. Now, by the world's culture... Many are deceived to think that they have a relationship with God when they don't even go to church. And, 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 
and they don't they don't even pray the bible tells us that we shouldn't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the days are approaching and yet we can be deceived or convinced rather to think that okay our relationship with god is cool because we choose which part of the bible we want to adhere to and be obedient to but culture does not support that kingdom culture does not support that at all and so the bible tells us that watch this we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together and our responsibility is to ensure that we do what is set up. I, I need a let me get I know I'm gonna need this it's right here our responsibility is to ensure that we follow the word at every level because at the end of the day everything that we are instructed to do is for our learning and ultimately all of us are trying to get to heaven but there is a certain culture or a certain course of conduct that is required to get there hallelujah in luke 18 verse 1 the bible tells us that men ought always to pray and not faint and again we've heard people say that they don't have to pray to communicate with god but is that the culture because prayer is one of the most effective ways that we can ever communicate with god that we can ever connect with god we know that as a church we are an ambassador of the kingdom of god and that we have a responsibility amen to advance the kingdom of god in the earth however there is a way that we are expected to do this i keep talking about the way because we're talking about culture as it relates to the church culture kingdom culture and kingdom culture is not separate from the way that god has prescribed for things to be done as it relates to the kingdom because the king is the one that sets into place these course of conduct amen remember that's what way is translated to mean amen now watch this because there is a way that we're expected to do this we now have to look at the way we do stuff because the kingdom culture does not support murmuring and complaining especially when it comes on to serving if it is that we're doing anything the bible tells us how we are we are to do things that stuff ought to be done in a cheerful spirit hallelujah that our attitude and the posture of our heart should be right behind everything that we do that we shouldn't do anything to be seen and worshipped and praised and applauded by men because that's not the culture of the kingdom the bible says that whenever it is that we do things to be seen by men that our reward is already given hallelujah because that's not the culture of the kingdom the truth is the reason why we murmur and complain is because we fail to see the bigger picture hallelujah senior pastor said something powerful on sunday he said and i and i heard pastor damien alluded to this he said that the picture is in the pattern Ooh. my question to you is what are you looking for because when we fail to understand accept and embrace kingdom culture then we miss the bigger picture not realizing that the culture 
was created by Christ and it is through Christ that this culture is going to cause the vision to be made manifested. Because remember, a toxic culture will kill and nullify and demolish any vision. And so some of us, some of us, for some of us, our life looks just like this on paper. The Bible tells us in Job 14 verse 1 that a man that is born of a woman has but few days. And these days are full of trouble. Hallelujah. All life is reflected like this on paper. Trouble. We're able to identify God in some areas. But for the most part... We go sometimes wondering where he's at. And every area that we, we were able to identify him, it becomes a monumental place because Christ came through. And sometimes we find ourselves and we're, we're going through stuff. We're, we're in this place where we're experiencing things. And sometimes it's as a result of the things that are happening around us. But watch this. When we look long enough. Whoo, I hear the Holy Ghost. Because many of us would have walked away from ministry in times past because of a culture. And one of the things that I've noticed is that whenever it is that we go somewhere, we go with an expectation because there is something that we're looking for. Hallelujah. And so we'll see somebody come on the job, they get employed, and after a certain time, we don't see them anymore. They're gone. Why? Because they had an expectation. And sometimes it's not that the culture that has been created is toxic. But it's because sometimes we don't give the culture or allow the culture to do what it was created to do. We don't stick around long enough for the culture to perfect some things in us. Hallelujah. For the culture to produce some things through us. We don't stick around long enough for the culture to cause a manifested work of God to be in our lives. And so again... Our lives is reflected like this. But again, I want to ask you, what are you looking for? Because the truth is, it doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. When we become an expert, hallelujah, at identifying, accepting, and embracing the kingdom culture that it works for us because it's Christ that's causing this work to be done it's Christ in the culture when people come to church they don't come to church looking for the pastor they come to church looking for Christ and so we have to trust that whatever culture that the pastor has put in place, that it was placed there by God to facilitate the work that God has called that pastor to do. But when we don't allow culture the opportunity, then sometimes we uproot ourselves because we say we can't find Christ in the culture. When in reality, some of us make decisions from past places and hurts and, and offenses. Not realizing that it's not that there is a perfect church. But we have to trust that the people and the things that God would have placed within that church is what makes it the perfect place for us and when we begin to look long enough we're able in the midst of all of this to find Christ in the culture in the midst of what we're going through 
in the midst of what's going on in our life, in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the things that we've experienced in times past, when we allow the culture the opportunity, then we begin to see Christ in the culture. And when we begin to identify Christ in the culture, it doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter which of these trouble comes. It doesn't matter how many times we peripeto. As long as we can identify Christ in the culture. It doesn't matter what test or what trial we experience. In all of this, when we become an expert of accepting and embracing kingdom culture, then we will always be able to see Christ in the culture. And no man will be able to pull you out of your place. And no trial will be able to take you out of position. And no hardship will be able to move you from the place that God has sent you. And no person will be able to offend you out of the church that God has ordained for you to be matured and cultivated and nurtured into all that God has called you to be. Because you were able to identify Christ in the culture. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Because there is a principle. And the principle is this. You will find me when you seek after me with all your heart. The principle is that when we seek, we shall find. And so if you're seeking to find flaws and faults within the culture that has been created to cause you to grow and matriculate in the things of God, you will find it. And then you will be moved out of position. What are you looking for? Oh my gosh, my time is up. My time is up. But I pray on today that you will be able in the midst of what you see going on, what you have going on, all that you have experienced in times past, to give culture an opportunity so that Christ can be revealed and that you can be all that God has called you to be because culture trumps vision. You can have the greatest vision but if the right culture is not embraced then your vision is only a great idea. I pray today that the Lord would have spoken something into your spirit that will keep you going, that you will not be moved in this season, that no devil from hell will pluck you out of the place that God has ordained for you to be, that you will not be one of those people that goes around from church to church, church hopping because you understand the purpose of culture and you're willing to embrace the culture within the kingdom. Because trouble ain't got a zip code. <laughs> ah, I pray that you were blessed today. But I got to go, family. Again, on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Lincoln G. Coffey, and assistant pastor, April Coffey, we thank you for joining us another time for Midday Motivation. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday for another power pack time in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can join us at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. If you're unable to be in the building with us, feel free to join us online. Hallelujah. You can see us on Facebook or catch us on YouTube. Amen. Again, we'll see you on Tuesday. Before then, remember Monday Evening Empowerment. Hallelujah. It has been a tremendous blessing. Hallelujah. We will see you guys here again next week, same time, same place, for Midday Motivation. God bless you today. And allow Jesus to be the center of it all.
find Christ in the culture. And you'll be just fine. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed one. Love you. Hallelujah. Glory be to you.